All right, and we're live. <coughs> <laughs> so, hey gang, Andy here. Um, just wanted to uh, do a live video here to talk about some stuff and things and have this basically be my February 2018 update video for, you guessed it, February 2018. Woo. So yeah, as always with these uh, monthly update videos, I'm going to be going over some personal life stuff as well as some youtube -y stuff. So let's just jump right into it. Um, <clears throat> You can tell from my voice and stuff. Uh, I've been a little sick recently. Um, the flu has come into full effect in this area, so that's why I haven't really uh, been able to make videos and stuff as of late. You know, I've even had to scale back on some uh, some editing projects until very recently. Uh, in fact, just today I started working on a little project for uh, my good old buddy Rado Rado uh, Radley from uh, Rad Culture. Um, finishing up an episode of his for the Why Come Japan podcast where he interviews another good friend of mine, <clears throat> uh, Albo, from Drift Hunter Albo. Uh, definitely recommend his content. Uh, if you guys are interested in like Initial D, uh, street racing, Japan, stuff like that, uh, his channel is definitely a great uh, place for that. Uh, his content is really, really high quality. Um, Hopefully he gets like a Netflix show or something like that because it's like that good, that high tier quality. Um, so yeah, definitely check his stuff out. And check out Radley's stuff as well. Um, but yeah, that's basically what I've been doing. And I just haven't really, you know, aside from being sick and just dying <laughs> from the flu. And I lost my voice a couple days ago. Um, getting it back uh, through the power of mints and uh, proper you know, water drinking and stuff like that, but it's still not 100% yet. But uh, I just wanted to come on here and uh, talk with you guys about, you know, the usual updatey stuff. So that's kind of been the main thing for uh, February, at least. It's just, you know, been sick, you know, still plugging away at editing projects when I can, but you know, sickness has kind of put a damper on that. And plus, you know, just other stuff as well. Um, but yeah, um, <laughs> that's kind of been my thing. Um, as far as um, future U YouTube stuff for me, um, I definitely want to do more live streams. I wanted to do like an editing live stream and stuff, but like I said, I've been sick. My voice isn't 100%, so I didn't want to, you know, talk for two to three hours straight uh, while I'm editing stuff. And plus, I got to get this episode out in particular. Um, so I just wanted to make this quick little live video um, just to talk to you guys, let you know I'm alive, barely, because <laughs> of the flu. And uh, I didn't forget about you. Um, just sick, because flu season. So that's kind of what's been going on in my neck of the woods. And, uh, you know, I guess personal life-wise, um, as you guys know, I'm going to be moving back to Ohio next month. So it's just been, you know, being on the grind, making money, um, getting ready to move back. Um, it's not really going to get super underway until, you know, this coming month because that's kind of how I roll. But, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, this is my voice again, shit. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I've just been working, saving up, trying to keep afloat until I move back in with my folks at the end of, the, of uh, next month. And then from there, um, I wanted to uh, find a job, you know, get savings and stuff built back up again, and then find another place that's kind of close by to where they live. Like, I don't want to live, like, super close to where we would, like, run into each other at the grocery store or something like that, but still you know, close enough to where if I wanted to stop by on the weekends or something like that, it wouldn't be too outside the uh, budget or anything like that. Because, like, that was kind of the idea with uh, moving out to Kalamazoo initially. Um, I didn't really take into account just how far Kalamazoo is from where my folks are. Um, to me, you know, I thought three hours was like, ah, eh, nothing, it's three hours, whatever. But like when it involves snow and Michigan drivers, and it's just, eh, it's not a good combo, especially not in the snow. Um, so I've been wanting to move back to Ohio for a while now, but 
You know, it was either due to school or, you know, apartment leases and, you know, it's just, the timing wasn't really right. So I decided, you know, once my current lease ends to move back to Ohio um, to just kind of start over, you know, I think that I had a lot of roadblocks in coming out to Kalamazoo, to say the least. Um, a lot of personal, mental uh, sort of issues I had to get through, um, especially coming out of the Navy. Um, I think, I think if I were to, <clears throat> you know, do this whole thing all over again, um, honestly, I probably would have just went straight to Temple. <laughs> I wouldn't have bullshitted around going to Western and all this other bullshit. And I would have just went straight to Temple, and you know, still had all my savings and you know, fun. But uh, you know, you live and you learn. Um, it's kind of a, the price you pay from all this, but you know, it's not the end of the world. Um, there's still other ways to get to Japan. Um, but that is, you know, my goal to get back out there, as I've been saying for a while now. It's just, you know, these things take, take time. You know, I don't have a whole lot of money or resources or anything like that. I can't just, you know, book a flight and get out there. You know, I don't have the money for something like that. Um, plus living out in the Midwest, um, the cost of living is pretty low, which is good, but also the amount of income you get is relative to that low cost of living, so that's kind of one of the reasons I want to do freelancing a bit more, because it's, it's global, you know, it allows me to work, um, pretty much anywhere at any time, and, uh, that's kind of the beauty of it, and that's, you know, something I wanted to do, because, you know, there's like a whole community and stuff of, you know, people that call themselves digital nomads. Um, but they, you know, I don't want to be like a nomad nomad where I have, you know, no attachments or anything like that. All I have is a backpack, my laptop, and the world at my feet, or however the phrase goes. Um, I guess the... Uh, Sort of the opposite end of being a digital nomad would be, I guess, just being a digital sedentary or something like that. That was one of the names proposed for it. But anyway, as I'm rambling on here, um, basically I just want to um, get these uh, freelancing gigs and stuff to where um, that income can support me full time. And from there, I can do more traveling because I think that's honestly... One of the things that I miss uh, ever since getting out of the Navy, uh, way back in late 2015, going on three years now, Jesus Christ, <laughs> it's been a long ride so far. Um, but yeah, uh, that's one of the things I've been missing is just being able to travel, being able to do stuff. Um, you know, in Japan, like, <clears throat> Jesus, <laughs> in Japan, uh, but in Japan, um, even if you didn't have a whole lot of money, you could still, like, do a lot of things, you know, even just going and walking around the parks and, you know, just riding your bicycle or if you have a motorbike or a car or something like that, you know, there's a lot to see and do in Japan that doesn't require a whole lot of money. And, you know, I can't really say the same for uh, where I live out here in the Midwest. I mean, there's some things, but, you know, especially in my little side of the mitt, um, it's college town, so if you're if you're like of traditional college age, then I think there's plenty for you to do. You know, lots of good bars and stuff like that. But uh, you know, as a thirty-something, no longer a twenty-something, and the bar scene's not really all that appealing to me unless I'm going with like a mass group of friends or something like that. I don't know. This is just a lot more fun doing that in Tokyo. Um, I don't know. Maybe it's one of those things where, you know, you lived in a big city or at least near a big city long enough that you go to, you know, someplace else and, you know, they try to do something different, but it's all like scaled down relative to, you know, that city. And it's just like, eh, it's not the same, you know. That's kind of the feeling I get from going to a lot of these places out in Kalamazoo and surrounding areas. It's just, you know, it's just kind of, eh. You know, it's okay, but nothing really to write home about. Nothing to really vlog about, at least. Um, that's how I feel, anyway.
But uh, yeah, man. Um, in addition to that, um, I've also been working through uh, a lot of uh, just personal creative burnout as well. Um, before I started getting sick with the flu and everything, you know, I was running at full steam as far as making videos and stuff like that goes for uh, for my clients. And, uh, you know, I just hit a wall. Um, I just, I reached my limit with uh, the amount of stuff I could do. And uh, I just burned out. And uh, I had some people upset at me about that. But, you know, kind of is what it is. We talked it out, hugged it out, whatever. <laughs> so we're good now. But, uh, you know, it's just one of those things where, um, and I'm glad that this problem happened, you know, so early into my freelancing. But, you know, it's just the whole, like, you should be working syndrome. You know, like every minute, every, every waking day, you should be working on a project, whether it's your own videos, somebody else's videos, or trying to set up something to where you can get more videos from clients you know that you either already have or get new clients you know it's the whole you should be working syndrome you know unless you're like getting ready to go to bed or eat like I am not ready to make something for uh, for supper tonight um, but I just want to put out this video to uh, talk to you all about stuff um, but that was just kind of what I was dealing with it's just this constant feeling of um, not being good enough as far as not not being able to put out enough videos for my clients, not, you know, having good enough editing quality for those videos, not doing the videos fast enough, um, stuff like that. And it really got to me. And, uh, you know, I just broke down, basically, as far as that stuff goes. And, you know, the, the flu kind of uh, helped push that along a little bit to where I physically couldn't do it um, but it did teach me a valuable lesson to you know to prioritize off time as much as you prioritize on time and what I mean by that is you know even though it's freelance and you can technically work anytime from anywhere for any amount of hours um, you should always prioritize um, not really prioritize but just um, make time for um, off time like you know it's not just extra time you know it's you know it's allocated as time that you're not working it's off time it's not just this nebulous undesignated time you know it's like this time will be for breakfast and then this will be for work and then this will be for lunch work again and then Something happens, you go to sleep, and then you start it all over again. So it's no longer that something happens. It's, it's all allocated, you know. It's, you know, I might work a little bit after supper. I might not. I uh, just got to kind of feel it out. But, you know, and one of the other things that kind of brought me to, you know, push myself, you know, to this certain point was, you know, just kind of, my training in the Navy, you know, one of the, one of the good things about the military, it's kind of a double-edged sword here, but one of the good things is that the military will train you on going beyond your limits. And in a lot of cases, that's good, but, you know, I've learned that, you know, limits are there for a reason. And if you go beyond them too much and you just like are constantly you know, just burning yourself at both, you know, burning the candle at both ends, you know, you're just going to burn yourself out that much quicker. And, uh, you know, it's okay to kind of go beyond your limits sometimes. Like if you want to get a project done or you're studying for finals and you want to pull an all-nighter just to, you know, get that last little bit of information in the old head brain, you know, it's good to go beyond your limits in certain specific situations. But you don't want to do that for months on end, you know, it just, you'll eventually burn out, and that's basically what happened to me, um, so, you know, I'm kind of glad that the flu happened when it did, because it, you know, it basically forced me to, to slow the fuck down, 
you know, whether I wanted to or not. Like, I had to take a couple days off from, from my real job to uh, recuperate because I had, like, a really high fever and, like, uh, muscles were all weak. And I was just a fucking mess. And even going into work yesterday was pretty rough because, you know, if, if you think my voice was bad now, um, I couldn't, I could barely speak. And in my job, uh, verbal communication is very key. I mean, communication is key to anything, really. But uh, in my IRL job, it's uh, especially crucial, especially timing stuff. Um, so it was really hard for me to get that across to my coworkers because they're all like looking at me and like, all right, Andy, what should we do? <laughs> what? <laughs> so, uh, <coughs> Jesus, and it feels like whenever I cough, like all the air in my lungs is expelled at once, and it's just like, <laughs> you know how it is. But yeah, um, as far as uh, what I plan on doing once I get back to Ohio, um, you know, like I said, uh, moving in with the folks just temporarily, um, just to kind of you know, regain my bearings and uh, to find a new place that's a bit closer to them um, so that way I can visit them on weekends or whatever, or something happens, they can stop by or whatever the case may be. Um, and uh, beyond that, you know, like I said, I do want to go back to Japan, but, you know, unless I'm going back to school, my choices are pretty limited, so... Um, I may just have to bite the bullet and go back to school, so it just kind of is what it is, but, um, you know, <laughs> it's just one of those things, but, uh, the way my grades ended up at, uh, Western and KVCC, um, I really need to rethink a lot of things before I even attempt to go back to school again. And, you know, obviously one of those things is a good support network. And that's one of the reasons why, you know, moving back to Ohio, because, you know, I have that support network. And that's, that's one of the things that kind of kept me grounded in Japan, even though I was having a really bad time out there, you know, with work and stuff. Um, one of the things that I did enjoy was the support network through, um, <clears throat> through my roommates, as well as... Uh, you know, people I met through YouTube that were living out in, like, Tokyo and surrounding areas. Um, we wouldn't get to see each other that often, but, you know, maybe a weekend or every other weekend or something like that. At least one of them would be available to hang out and talk, chill, whatever. Go to some random hole-in-the-wall bar that I don't know about. Um, that's not widely advertised. And then they get all huffy when I can't follow directions. Like, ugh, you've been in Japan for, like... A month. How come you don't know like five hundred thousand kanji like we do? <sighs> I was like, give me a break, dude. Shit. But you know, it's whatever. I still love you guys. Um, yeah, I definitely do want to get back to, out, out to Japan. Um, I just, you know, and I've been saying this for a while, but you know, I just feel like, you know, American life just doesn't really have anything to offer me. Um, and one of my one of my good friends said this, um, you know, America is a great country if you're rich, but if you're not, it, it sucks, <laughs> you know, and there's still the notion of the American dream of, you know, working your way up the ranks and, you know, going from rags to riches, I guess, and, you know, that's still around, but, you know, we've become more of a, a global society, an international society. And it's a lot easier to, you know, make it in the world rather than just in a specific country. So, you know, um, and in Japan, you know, um, it's pretty easy to, you know, live at least comfortably by my, my standards. You know, like, I live a pretty Spartan life. I mean, it looks pretty nice and stuff in the background. But, you know, it just, most of this is just kind of leftovers from back when I was in the Navy and had the money to spend on a, you know, big screen, flat screen TV, couch, 
stuff like that. Um, the computer, <laughs> probably the most costly thing I own next to my car. Um, but yeah, um, definitely would go back to Japan. I just, I just felt like, you know, creatively, I was, you know, reaching new levels. And now that I'm doing more editing and learning how to cut things, you know, more, uh, I guess, cinematically, or just make it more appealing cut-wise, rather than just kind of do what I used to do on YouTube, which was just more of a kind of an artistic sort of like old school YouTuber mentality, which is just, you know, put stuff up there, minimally edited, uh, but just make it more about me and rather, rather than the place, which, you know, I don't really agree with that philosophy anymore. I mean, unless you want to be like an online personality, that's a little different, but, uh, you know, for me, I, you know, want to showcase the place more than myself. Um, and just the other little differences, you know, especially learning more about editing and stuff than I did before. Because, like, before it was just kind of as a necessity just to cut out a lot of the ums, the ahs, the uh, you knows, things like that. Um, <laughs> I said it right there. So, shit, I'm catching myself. God damn it. Eh. But you guys, you guys understand what I'm saying, though. Um... So I just wanted to go back to Japan, knowing what I know now uh, about editing and things like that, and put together some like really good uh, YouTube videos and collab with more people, uh, both big and small. Uh, I think that's just one of the biggest joys I've gotten uh, while I was out in Japan was being able to um, meet up with a lot of YouTubers, uh, both you know big YouTubers that were my heroes, you know back when the platform was first starting as well as, you know, up-and-coming creators who are just getting their feet wet. And, you know, I'd always come up to them and just, like, encourage them about making videos and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, things like that. Um, before it gets into, like, a name-dropping phase. Um, but that's just one of the things I miss, man. There's not really anything like that out here, at least in this part of America. Maybe in L.A. it's different, but, you know, L.A.'s... A way different animal for most of America anyway. So, I think my voice is pretty much shot. Um, <laughs> we've recorded, like, what, over 22 minutes so far? Uh, so I think that's plenty enough to let you guys know what's been going on in my life and what to expect moving forward, both YouTube-wise as well as personal life-wise. So, anyway, guys, I gotta get back to this project for uh, my good old buddy, Rado Rado. Um, definitely check it out when it comes up on the on the Rad Culture channel. Uh, definitely subscribe to Radley. He's a good guy. Makes good stuff. I help. <laughs> Sometimes. But, yeah, man. Be sure to check it out when it comes out. Probably in a couple days. Um, and with that said, guys, this is the Andy sign. Time for now. And as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye.